Welcome to Hermetic Horizons, where we explore the depths of esoteric wisdom and the expansive universe of Hermeticism. Today, we embark on a journey back to the roots of ancient mythology and cosmology with the Theogony of Hesiod, a foundational text that not only narrates the birth of the gods and the cosmos, but also holds profound significance for Hermetic philosophy. The Theogony of Hesiod is an epic poem that outlines the genealogy of the Greek gods, detailing the emergence of chaos, the rise of the Titans, and the ascendancy of the Olympian gods led by Zeus. It presents a universe born out of primordial elements, where divine forces shape the cosmos and the fate of existence. This narrative of creation, struggle, and order provides a rich tapestry for understanding the nature of the divine and its manifestation in the material world. In the realm of Hermeticism, which encompasses a philosophical and spiritual tradition drawing on the teachings attributed to Hermes Trismegistus, the Theogony resonates with core principles such as the interconnectedness of the cosmos, the divine spark within, and the journey of the soul. Hermeticism, with its emphasis on as above, so below, finds a reflection in Hesiod's portrayal of a cosmos where gods and humans are part of a grand, interconnected design. Through our exploration of the Theogony, we'll delve into themes of creation, divine will, and the quest for knowledge and understanding. We'll see how this ancient text echoes the hermetic pursuit of gnosis, knowledge of the divine, and how it informs our understanding of the universe, the divine, and ourselves. Join us on Hermetic Horizons as we uncover the wisdom of the Theogony of Hesiod and its relevance to Hermetic thought. Discover how this ancient narrative continues to inspire those on the path of spiritual and philosophical inquiry, bridging the mystical past with the quest for eternal truths. The Theogony of Hesiod. Let us begin with the Muses of Helicon, who dwell on the great and sacred Mount Helicon. They dance with delicate feet around the deep blue spring and the altar of the mighty son of Kronos, washing their tender bodies in Permessus, the horse's spring, or Olmeus, before making their beautiful dances upon lofty Helicon. With vigorous steps, they move, then at night, shrouded in thick mist, they wander, singing with beautiful voices. They praise Zeus, the Aegis-bearer, queenly Hera of Argos, who treads on golden sandals, bright-eyed Athena, daughter of Zeus, Phoebus Apollo, Artemis who delights in arrows, Poseidon who shakes the earth, revered Themis, quick-glancing Aphrodite, Hebe with the golden crown, fair Dione, Leto, Iapetus, crafty counselor Kronos, Eos, great Helios, bright Selene, Earth, great Oceanus, dark night, and the holy race of all other immortals that are forever. It was to Hesiod that they taught glorious song while he tended his lambs under holy Helicon, and thus spoke the goddesses, the muses of Olympus, daughters of Aegis bearing Zeus. Shepherds of the wilderness, mere bellies, we know to speak false things as true, but we also know when we choose to speak truth. They gifted Hesiod a shoot of sturdy laurel, a marvelous thing, and breathed into him a divine voice to celebrate what will be and what was. They commanded him to sing of the eternal race of blessed gods, always placing the muses first and last in his song. Why dwell on oak or stone? Let us begin with the muses who please Zeus's great spirit on Olympus with their songs, recounting what is, what will be, and what was, with harmonious voice. Their sweet sound flows unwearyingly, delighting Zeus within his thunderous halls, while the peaks of snowy Olympus resound, and the homes of the immortals echo their immortal voices. They celebrate the revered race of gods, the sons of earth and heaven, and the gods who give good things. They sing of Zeus, supreme among gods and men, at the beginning and end of their song, celebrating his might. They also chant of the race of men and mighty giants, pleasing the heart of Zeus on Olympus, the Olympian muses, daughters of Zeus, the Aegis holder. Mnemosyne in Pieria bore them to Zeus after lying with him for nine nights away from the other gods. These nine daughters of one mind, with hearts set on song and spirits free from care, 
were born near the peak of Olympus. There, they have bright dancing places and lovely homes, living in delight with the graces and desire. With their lovely voices, they sing of the gods' laws and their noble ways, then proceed to Olympus, their sweet singing delighting the dark earth and the gods. Zeus, wielding lightning and thunderbolt, established their honors after defeating his father Kronos, distributing the immortals' portions and declaring their privileges. The muses, born of Zeus and wise memory, include Cleo, Euterpe, Thalia, Melpomene, Terpsichore, Erato, Polyhymnia, Urania, and chief among them, Calliope. They bless heaven-nurtured princes, granting them sweet speech and wise judgments, making them revered among men. Through the muses and far-shooting Apollo, we have singers and harpers. Through Zeus, we have wise princes, whom the muses favor. Sweet speech flows from his mouth, lightening hearts burdened with sorrow, for the goddess's gifts turn men away from their troubles. Hail, children of Zeus! Grant us lovely song as we celebrate the holy race of the deathless gods, born of earth, starry heaven, gloomy night, and the briny sea. Tell of the first gods in earth, the boundless sea, gleaming stars, wide heaven, and how they divided their riches and shared their honors, beginning with the origins of the cosmos. First chaos came to be, then wide-bosomed earth, the ever-solid foundation of all, dim Tartarus in the depth of the earth, and Eros, fairest among the deathless gods. From chaos, Erebus and black night emerged. From night, ether and day were born, conceived in love with Erebus. Earth bore starry heaven, equal to herself, to cover her and be a secure dwelling for the gods. She produced the long hills and Pontus, the fruitless deep, without love's sweet union. Later, Earth lay with heaven, producing deep-swirling Oceanus, Chius, Creus, Hyperion, Iapetus, Thea, Rhea, Themis, Menemesine, Phoebe, Tethys, and the youngest, Kronos, the wily most dreadful of her children, who despised his vigorous sire. The Cyclopes, Brontes, Steropes, and Argus were born, giving Zeus his thunder and crafting the thunderbolt, named for their single orb-like eye. The titans, Cotus, Briareos, and Gais, of tremendous strength and hundred arms, were also born, the most fearsome of earth and heaven's offspring, hated by their father from birth. Heaven hid them in earth, causing her great anguish. In her distress, earth crafted a great sickle and conspired with her children to punish Kronos for his vile deeds. Kronos, the youngest, took up the sickle, castrated heaven, and cast his genitals into the sea, from which Aphrodite, the foam-born goddess of love, emerged. From the blood of heaven, the Arenes, giants, and Meliae were born. Aphrodite, accompanied by Eros and Desire, commands great power among gods and men, bestowing honors and igniting love. The titans reproached by heaven as strainers for their audacious act faced future vengeance. Night bore a brood of dark beings. Doom, fate, death, sleep, dreams, and others, including the relentless fates, Clotho, Lachesis, Atropos, who pursue the sins of gods and men until justice is served. From the union of sea and earth came Nereus, the truthful old man of the sea, and other formidable children, Thaumas, Phorcys, Ceto, and Eurybia. Nereus and Doris, daughter of ocean, bore lovely daughters, including Thetis and Amphitrite, who, with Apollo and the rivers, oversee the youth. Ocean and Tethys produce the rivers and a host of daughters, the Oceanids, who serve earth and the sea, and countless other rivers and nymphs, too numerous for mortals to name. The sun, Helios, the moon, Selena, and dawn, Eos, were born to Thea and Hyperion. Eurybia, married to Creus, bore Astrius, Pallas, and Perses. Eos and Astrius fathered the winds and the morning star, Eosphorus. Styx, daughter of ocean, mothered Zelus, Nike, Kratos, and Bia, who dwell with Zeus, honoring the oath made by the gods during their battle against the Titans. 
Zeus's court includes other divine children from his unions with goddesses like Demeter, Mnemosyne, and Leto, producing deities and heroes central to the Olympian order. Zeus's strategic marriages and his swallowing of Metis to prevent the birth of a rival signify his supreme wisdom and authority. The gods, having defeated the Titans with the help of the Cyclopes and the Hundred Handers, establish Zeus as the king of gods, distributing divine roles and honors. The narrative shifts to recount Zeus's various liaisons with goddesses and mortals, resulting in the birth of gods, demigods, and heroes who play significant roles in mythological tales and the shaping of the ancient world. These stories highlight the complex relationships between gods and mortals, and the enduring legacy of their unions in the pantheon of Greek mythology. The Theogony concludes with a call to the muses to sing of the mortal women who bore divine children, blending the worlds of gods and men, and perpetuating the rich tapestry of Greek mythological tradition. As we close this profound journey through the Theogony of Hesiod, we extend our deepest gratitude to you, our valued listeners and viewers, for embarking on this exploration of ancient wisdom with us here at Hermetic Horizons. Your engagement and curiosity fuel our passion for uncovering the mysteries that bind the cosmos and the human spirit. The Theogony of Hesiod is not merely a tale of gods and creation. It is a tapestry interwoven with the very principles that lie at the heart of Hermeticism. Through Hesiod's verses, we glimpse the Hermetic maxim, as above, so below, as it unfolds in the lineage of the gods, revealing a universe alive with the echoes of divine harmony and the eternal search for knowledge. This audiobook has offered us a bridge to the past, connecting the dots between the mythological narratives of ancient Greece and the esoteric teachings of Hermeticism that continue to inspire seekers of wisdom today. We hope this journey has ignited a spark of curiosity within you to delve deeper into the mysteries of existence and to explore the rich interplay between mythology and the esoteric tradition. The Theogony of Hesiod stands as a testament to the enduring quest for understanding that transcends time and culture, inviting us to reflect on the origins of the cosmos and our place within it. Thank you for joining us on this voyage of discovery. Your presence and participation make Hermetic Horizons a community of like-minded individuals, united in our pursuit of ancient knowledge and its relevance to our modern quest for spiritual and philosophical enlightenment. Stay tuned to Hermetic Horizons for more explorations into the realms of mythology, Hermeticism, and beyond. Together, let us continue to seek the light of ancient wisdom that guides us through the darkness of the unknown.